According to NASA, low Earth orbit is a space junkyard, with millions of pieces of human-made garbage flying at speeds of around 18,000 miles per hour. So we're talking about weather satellites, we're talking about um, other Earth observation science satellites that are in orbits where everybody wants to be, but they've been left stranded there. For more than six decades, humans have been launching spacecraft into low Earth orbit and out into the universe. That includes satellites that provide GPS and weather forecasting down here on Earth, but those devices have limited lifespans. After a spacecraft is no longer serving a purpose, it becomes junk. And that's the topic of this week's episode of Space Curious. Joining us now with more on this, News 6 space reporter Emily Speck. And Emily, you talked all about this space junk and really the, the threat it can pose. Yeah, that's right. There's millions of pieces of space junk just floating out there. They're human made, there's some natural made space junk, but either way, low Earth orbit is getting pretty crowded. So that image that you showed on your podcast, I mean, that was pretty eye opening for somebody who didn't really realize this is a thing. So do we know where all of this space junk is and what's happening with it? So um, what we do know and what I learned through this episode of the podcast and talking to some experts at FIT is that uh, NASA and DARPA and the UN do a really good job of tracking the space debris and the space junk. So they are aware of it and it's also the reason why, say, the space station might have to move or change its orbit to avoid some debris. And what is the long-term plan to really keep up with all of this? Well, like I just mentioned, there's a lot of organizations kind of keeping track of this, and this is a well-known and well-documented problem. Uh, the solution in the long run is, is not really quite clear yet. There's a lot of uh, technology that is being developed, and so hopefully in the next few years, we can see a few missions that can either collect space debris or possibly refuel some of these satellites and put them back to work. And you mentioned talking to some experts. Who are some of these experts, and what can we expect when we listen to this episode? Sure. So in this ep episode, I uh, went to, over to Florida Tech, and I spoke to the former head of space sciences there. Um, he's now a contractor with KSC. And um, another engineer expert who is working on some technology that could possibly collect these satellites and space debris and bring them back down so they burn up into Earth. We've seen it portrayed in many movies mm -hmm. like WALL-E and Gravity when we think about uh, space junk. I mean, it is a real thing, but it's, it's been making news. It's been making the Hollywood silver screen. Yeah, so that's a really good point. In the episode, um, one of our experts, Dan Bachelor, he kind of talks about that scene in the movie Wall-E where the little robot's hanging onto his spacecraft and flying through a field of, of debris. I mean, you even see the old Sputnik satellite in there. Um, that's not really close to reality. It's not really that big of a problem. Um, like I said, we're keeping track of where all this debris is, so that's that's not quite the issue. The sci-fi version is a little worse than, than what it really is, but, um, you know, in maybe 50, 100, 200 years, it's possible that could be a reality. So at this point, we're not worried about it crashing back down to Earth. No, when something like, uh, say, a defunct satellite is, is done and maybe it's gonna be deorbited and these spacecraft operators, they have to have a plan for that. When it comes back down to Earth, it burns up and breaks up. So you shouldn't worry about a satellite falling on your head. <laughs> that's good. We can check one thing off the list in 2020 yeah. not to worry about. <laughs> so that's, that's our bright spot today. <laughs> well, what's coming up on some of your uh, next episodes, Emily? So this next episode, we're going to talk uh, kind of more about low Earth orbit. You know, we've got SpaceX launching now almost 700 satellites with the Starlink constellation. Yeah. Um, but they're not the only ones that want to do this. We've got OneWeb and Samsung and Amazon that also want to do these huge satellite constellations. So in the next episode, I'm going to look at that. And I talked to some astronomers about some of the problems with these satellites and how reflective they are and how essentially, you know, it's 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 making our version of the night sky not what it used to be. Mm -hmm. And very fascinating. Yes. Well, Emily, thank you so much for the updates there. Again, these podcast episodes come out every other Wednesday. The newest one is live right now. You can go to clickorlando.com slash space and download the podcast from wherever you like to get them or go to clickorlando.com slash podcast. But it's a great addition to, you know, yes. these topics that we don't get to talk about as much. Yes, we've got an expert in-house, which is nice.